Hi everybody, I'm Razvi. Welcome back to another video from the Binary Exploitation series. In this video, we are going to see how we can debug our own exploit in order to see how it interacts with the vulnerable binary we are trying to exploit and how our specially crafted payload or data is arranged into memory. In other words, we are going to see how we can attach a debugger to the vulnerable process which has been spawned from our exploit and it's interacting with it. Usually, when we are writing our exploits, we declare the vulnerable binary and then we spawn it as a process and assign it to a given variable. It is with this variable that we are interacting when we are providing some input, our crafted payload, we send it and then we just parse the output of the vulnerable process. Now, what happens if you say, for example, want to provide this payload the sequence of bytes by hand from your keyboard, where depending on the debugger you use, you may have an easier or harder time. With GDB, for example, you can embed Python commands. However, if you use Radar2, you may have a hard time doing so. What's more, what happens when you send a given payload to the vulnerable process, the running binary? You parse the output and based on that output, you perform several calculations and then send again the payload. Let's say you want to see how this payload is arranged in memory or maybe something isn't working and you want to know why, for example, this call doesn't get executed. How can you do so? Well, of course, you can by simply interacting with the debugger using your keyboard. You have to somehow automatically parse all the information provided by the vulnerable process. And that's precisely why we write exploits in the first place. And when these exploits do not work, it is very handy to have debugging mechanisms. Now, of course, you may think that you can replicate this behavior by simply writing all the payload to a given file and providing that file as the standard input for your Radar2 session, for example. Of course, this might work, but what happens when you have something like dynamic addresses, which is, in this case, the base of the libc. With each execution of the vulnerable binary, the address leaked by the binary is different. In other words, you can't just print to a file all the payloads you want to send to the vulnerable process because with each execution, the second payload may be different because it depends on a randomized address. Remember, ASLR is enabled by default. So, in short, what we want to do is debug this very execution. We want to see how our exploit is interacting with the vulnerable process and how the data is being sent and stored in the memory of the vulnerable process. So, how can we do it? As always, there are several ways of doing so, but I usually use, of course, Poon Tools, our standard exploiting library and more precisely its proc process module. In this case, the proc module has several very useful functions that we can make use of and it has one which is pretty convenient for what we are trying to do right here. It is wait for debugger. As you can see, this function sleeps until the process with PID is being traced and it receives just a single parameter, which is the PID of the process being put to sleep. So basically what we have to do is use this function to put to sleep the vulnerable process which has been spawned from our exploit and make it wait for another process to attach to it, to trace it. And of course that another process will be just another terminal using our debugger of choice, rather a chew, GDB, whatever you like. And how can we get the process ID of the vulnerable process being spawned from our exploit? Well, here it is when Poon Tools comes in to save the day once again. If we take a look at all the functions this whole module has, we will soon find out there is a PID off function. As you can see, this function gets the process ID or IDs of target. And target, in our case, will be the variable containing the spawned process, the vulnerable binary and it returns a list of found process IDs. With just these two functions, we can put to sleep the process spawned from our exploit and attach to it a debugger, thus getting to see or actually getting to debug every single interaction our exploit does with the vulnerable process.
And now let's put all of this into practice. Let's see how it actually works. Just for the sake of the example, I have here an actual vulnerable binary, which we don't really care about because it will be just an example. We don't really care how to exploit it. The first thing we need is, as always, of course, define the context of the binary we are actually trying to exploit. This will internally set some variables of the Poon Tools library, for example, the architecture of the binary. And then we just want to spawn the process and assign it to a given variable. And now here comes the trick. Using the PID of function from the proc module of Poon Tools, we are actually able to retrieve the process ID of the process we have just spawned, the vulnerable process. And in this case, we are retrieving just the first element because remember this function returns a list. Then I am printing that very process ID because I want to know its value because I will use another terminal to attach to it and then I will put it to sleep. I will make it wait until a debugger is attached. That's why we are using the second function wait for debugger and we are providing the PID we have just retrieved. Now let's take a quick look at our vulnerable binary which I insist is actually irrelevant for this video. I will debug it as always using cutter and we can see it actually has every single protection. It has scanneries, the NX bit is enabled and it is a position independent code or executable. But we don't really care. We will just see an example of how we can debug our exploit. Now taking a quick look at the functions this binary has, we can see we have a main and we have also a win function. Let us take a look at the main function to see what it's actually doing. We can see it just does some stuff we don't really care about. It prints do you want, to? then it gets a single char, which is compared to the 79 right here in hexadecimal, corresponds to the lowercase y. And in case they are equal, we get to call the get feedback function. Let us take a look at get feedback. We can see at a first glance that here we have a call to read. As we know so far, read is a vulnerable function and we can see it writes up to 1e in hexadecimal bytes into the buffer buff. We can see now that the buff buffer is stored at rbp-12 in hexadecimal. Continuing with our execution, we see that then it prints back whatever we just provided with the string you said and then the format specifier s for string and then regardless of this conditional jump we get to execute this code block right here which once again calls to read which is vulnerable and it writes the data we provide once again in the buff buffer and it reads up to 90 bytes this is clearly a buffer overflow twice in this case we have two buffer overflows the second one writing way more data out of the buffer and you may think that just by abusing this second call to read we could actually jump to the win function however remember that this binary is protected by both position independent code which means that the addresses of our instructions from the test segment will change between executions, they will be different, they will get randomized. And also remember that we have canaries right here. We have to leak the canary and then overwrite its position with the very same value. However, we will not exploit the binary in this video. Now let's see how we can make use of the wait for debugger function from Poon Tools and what is it useful for. Another thing which is important for us to take into account is that the canary lives at rbp-8. So let us execute at least once the vulnerable binary. I will input a lowercase y. Do you like CTF? Let's say y. And then you said y and that's great. Can you provide some extra feedback? And then we don't care for, about anything else. So in this particular case, I want to debug the second input we are providing because here is where the first buffer overflow lies. In other words, we could just receive the output of the binary until we get the word survey with a question mark. We provide the Y, lowercase Y, then 
once again ctf question mark and then we will debug from here and transforming this into an actual exploit is pretty simple as you can see we spawn the process and we assign it to the p variable and then we make it wait for our debugger then we receive until we encounter the survey question mark then we send a lowercase y and then we receive until we encounter ctf question mark then the padding i am generating is just 10 a characters and 8 null bytes and we are sending to the process that padding now remember that we are writing into memory from rbp minus 12 in hexadecimal and the canary lives at rbp minus 8 that means that from rbp minus 12 we need 10 in decimal padding bytes to reach the canary and then we can overwrite it with 8 bytes that's precisely why i have here 10 padding bytes and this is the canary this will overwrite this will smash the canary if my assumptions are correct and that's exactly what we are about to check using the wait for debugger call we have just seen and now in order to test it i simply need to execute it from a terminal for example right here as you can see it states it is waiting for a debugger and now i have here the process id that i must attach to now from another terminal i can use rather a chew and attach to this process id as you can see the message now changed to done and i have here a debugging session with rather just like any other process i can inspect for example the contents of the get feedback function which is the vulnerable one the contents of registers and i can basically do whatever i want just like any other debugging session so now let us for example inspect the contents of this stack right after the first call to read takes place after the vulnerability happens and this way i can see whether my assumptions were correct and the canary got overwritten with just null bytes so i will execute the process we have reached the breakpoint and now let me inspect the stack i want to inspect it at rbp minus 18 because i want it to be aligned to 8 bytes rbp minus 12 isn't aligned as you can see we have rbp right here and remember that rbp minus 8 which is this address right here 5f8 is the canary and as you can see it is nothing else than just null bytes in other words we have managed to successfully overwrite the canary as we intended and we are debugging our exploit now we are sure we have just checked that the canary is overwritten and we can of course see also the padding bytes now let us see another application of debugging our exploit which is very useful in fact it is probably the most useful use case of debugging your own exploit which happens when you want to make sure that the payload you are providing which is computed based on something the program outputs is actually correct in this binary by abusing the first read call we are actually able to leak the canary its value once already loaded into memory we won't go very deep into details how this can be done because that's not the purpose of the video however we can use it to overwrite the return address of main without getting detected by the stacks machine detection mechanism by the canary itself and that's what we are doing here after setting the first padding we will receive everything the program outputs and then we will parse it accordingly and split it whenever it's needed and we will get the value of the canary that is the very same value of the canary which is placed on the stack in this case i am printing the canary i have leaked in order to make sure it is the same that is present on the stack and then i am using it again to provide padding to overwrite it with its very same value and i am overwriting rbp with rasv of and the null byte which are eight bytes and then the two least significant bytes of the saved return address are overflown with x this is one of those cases examples in which you provide something to the vulnerable binary it outputs whatever you need and then you parse it and use it 
in your next payload. This is very hard to debug without the wait for debugger function from Poon Tools library, because the data, the values that correspond to the canary are different with every single execution. So there is basically no way for you to know it if you generate this data in a static way. Once again, in order to test it, we need to launch the exploit from a terminal and then we need to copy this process ID and use from another terminal our debugger of choice and attach to that PID. So now let us once again inspect the get feedback function and let us place a breakpoint right after the canary has been placed, for example, here. And then we have to inspect the memory right after the second read call, which is supposed to override the canary with its very same value and write RASVOF in the RBP position. So now let us execute it. We can see we have reached the breakpoint and let us inspect the stack contents at RBP minus 18. And we can see that here we have RBP which is this value right here. And this is our canary. As you can see, it is D4, 11, ending in 6000. So let us continue our execution. And you can see our prints from the Python script are getting executed. And we have leaked that the canary is this value right here. You can see it is exactly the same, D4, 11, 6000. That is because our exploit is successfully leaking the canary, parsing it and using it in our exploit, of course. And now let us print the contents of the memory of the stack once again and see whether we have successfully managed to overwrite the stack. As you can see, here they are all our padding A characters. The canary has been overwritten with itself, the very same value. And now here we have rasvof with the null byte at the end, which is this string right here, and the least two significant bytes of the saved return address have been overflown with just x. Now we are seeing these numbers right here in the reverse order because Radare assumes they are integers and by default considers them to be little endian, which isn't the case because we are printing strings. So let me print without the R, just using PX, RBP minus. And we can see here that the least two significant bytes of the saved return address, which is F8 and F9, are overflown with X. Remember that writing into memory happens from lower addresses toward higher ones. And this is how we have debugged our exploit, making sure verifying that it is working as intended. In this case, we have verified that the canary is being overflown with its very same value. This way making our stack machine undetectable or invisible to the canary mechanism, to the stack machine detection mechanism. And that is exactly what we have seen in this video, how we can debug our own exploits and make sure our payloads are working as intended. I hope you found this video useful. If there is anything you want to say, leave a comment below. And remember, exploit code, not people. See you in the next one. Until then, GG.